So uh, welcome to this uh, webinar on uh, distance teaching for departments of IHE and DUC2. And uh, this uh, webinar is organized by the e-learning e team and uh, the people that you see here on the, on the screen. Uh, I would like to first uh, give the word to uh, Wim Doeven, the coordinator of the DUC2 uh, program, to say a few uh, words. Yeah, uh, uh, thank you, Hans, and, and welcome to uh, our uh, participants. Uh, yeah, my name is Wim Doeven. I work at um, IG Delft, and I am also the coordinator of the programmatic cooperation that we have with the Dutch Ministry of Foreign Affairs, which is called uh, DUPC. And um, DUPC is, 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 is our partnership program, uh, and it funds many uh, education, research, and knowledge sharing activities which we jointly undertake with our partners, and all these activities are focused on tackling water and development challenges in lower middle income countries in Africa, Middle East, Latin America, and Asia. And, and for this program, um, um, distance collaboration and distance learning for the partnership has always been very important, and the program has always, from the start, from the very start, it has always supported this, but but now in the in the current um, uh, crisis, Corona crisis, we are all in. This is this is becoming even more important, and that's actually why we thought we need to start organizing this type of webinars to get in contact with our partners and to try and understand their needs and challenges and to see how we can help each other. So that's why we. Um, are giving it additional attention, and um, we have put some information about uh, distance collaboration, distance learning on our website, and we can put the link to our website on the chat, but we also do it through um, this seminar, um, and I think the, the purpose of the seminar is, is, well, that first we would like to share some examples of distance teaching at IHE Delft. Uh, but in the second part, um, it's also important to, um, to open up for questions and answers you might have, and also to give you the possibility to share experiences. Um, before I give the floor back to Hans, um, our idea is to have uh, more webinars in the future for partners on different topics. So if you have an idea for a topic which you think is relevant for the partnership, or if you want to host or present a webinar, then uh, please let us know. So I would like to give the floor back to Hans. Thank you, Wim, for that uh, introduction. So um, I would like to introduce uh, the, the other colleagues who will also, during this webinar, answer your questions uh, through the chat. So if you have any questions, you put it in the, in the chat box so they can answer them. And in the, in the end, we will have a plenary uh, discussion. So there is uh, Nadine Sander, also from the DPC2 committee. We have from the Education Bureau Raquel Dos Santos and uh, Jipke Koster, both very uh, expert on, uh, on e-learning. And we have uh, a lecturer, uh, Carlos Lopez Vasquez, who also is going to present uh, uh, his work in this webinar. So uh, please uh, engage with them. I will not look at the, the chat box during uh, the presentation. So I hope the colleagues uh, can, can handle with uh, all your questions. So uh, we had a previous webinar where we discussed a lot about uh, e-learning. I'm going to repeat a little bit about that, not, not so much, but uh, we hear all these things about e-learning, online courses, MOOCs, uh, webinars, etc. cetera. But uh, yeah, why do we need to do all these things? And uh, if we would be now with a big group, we would discuss it. But I would now simply present to you what came out of those questions from previous sessions that we had. Um, People say it's about increasing your impact by training more people on uh, water-related uh, topics. Also, what came up is to improve the cost effectiveness, um, to reduce the need for students to travel, especially uh, in our type of work, where we uh, work with uh, partners in the Global South and vice versa. You also work a lot uh, with your own network in the region. And uh, that has a high cost. You need to host uh, people. You need different universities to be involved. And online, that's, of course, more uh, cost uh, efficient. 
also to facilitate the sharing of educational materials between partners through uh, an online uh, source that's much easier than, uh, than physically sharing it and sending it around, learning from each other. It's also a great opportunity to update your existing curricula because yeah, you can, of course, start from your existing curricula and make them in some way uh, open. But it's also a great moment to look back at what you have and try to improve it and make the content really up to date and presentable through an online uh, platform. So that's, uh, that's important. And of course, address the emerging themes that would attract even more participants. Another thing that you can do is if you have it online, you can cut it in pieces and uh, offer it as professional short courses that, uh, yeah, that are really offered at a regular basis. You can more often uh, offer these courses than you do with your face-to-face -face trainings because you don't need rooms, you don't need uh, all kinds of uh, facilities. It's also an opportunity to develop formats and procedures for uh, for the online education to have the same uh, kind of quality control that we have with the face-to-face, -face, especially important for universities. So uh, that's important to, to have in place. We want to address also as IEG, but I think also a lot of partners that um, when people graduate in our institute, like many of us will, uh, our students will do uh, next month, that it doesn't stop there, that we also offer lifelong learning for professionals that they can still follow uh, online uh, courses easily. And it would be too expensive for us to offer all these things face to face. And with e-learning, we can offer those things. And not to forget, it's very green. People don't need to travel. You know, of course, in our uh, work that the environment is very important. So uh, green is a good uh, argument. And we can add another one, like we are now in the Corona crisis and uh, we can't have people uh, on campus. E-learning is the only solution under those conditions. So we see uh, that at IHE we are now exploring all these options and applying it because we can't wait. We have to continue our teaching. That brings me to uh, this slide. So at IHE in the last few weeks, uh, because of the restrictions that we have, uh, because of the corona crisis, we started to exchange a lot of knowledge between uh, lecturers. And we got a lot of nice support from our colleagues from the Education Bureau who are also attending this meeting. And um, well, in the first step, what you have to do is, uh, of course, you don't have an online course completely ready uh, when such a crisis starts. Um, you can be prepared for the future, but for now you need ad hoc solutions. And then we speak about distance teaching and you can do that with a tool uh, such as Big Blue Button. And Big Blue Button is nicely integrated in uh, Moodle that we use as an e-learning platform. And through uh, Big Blue Button, you can, uh, of course, chat with your uh, students, but you can also share uh, uh, the videos, share webcams, share audio. You can even have breakout rooms. That's a very nice functionality. You can do polls and quizzes, and you can use a multi-user whiteboard. So it offers a lot of uh, possibilities. And yeah, it's really great to exchange your uh, experience on that. And uh, IHE, of course, can help you uh, with exploring the functionality of tools like uh, Big Blue Button. How we are going to do to share that experience, I'm going to show you in the end because we have some uh, nice uh, platform for that for you. So at IHE, we offer different uh, modalities. So the, the distance teaching with Big Blue Button is, uh, is of course important, but that's very similar to the face-to-face. -face. But what we also do is full-blown uh, online courses where uh, people just subscribe to the online course and go through it uh, self-paced. And um, well, these are different uh, modalities. We also have uh, MOOCs. We did a big one for the Afri Alliance uh, project where also many partners were involved. We have open course where I'll show that a bit. Open educational resources. That's all kinds of videos and tutorials that, that you can share with others. And uh, webinars like this one where you can put focus on uh, on the other products. You can showcase what you have and you can attract um, your target group to uh, to do more with you. And that's uh, that works very well. So the online courses and the professional diploma courses are uh, accredited and they have a tuition fee. The other modalities are, are free to use. These modalities need to fit into a business model. In a previous webinar, I've uh, explained how that uh, could work and how I re-engineered, reverse engineered this kind of business model. 
So in fact, what you need to do in that kind of vision is that you develop your materials when there's a demand from the market. In IHE, the demand comes in when we do a tailor-made training for a certain client. Uh, the client has uh, market needs and you get money and time to develop that. And then you can reuse it in all these other modalities. Uh, you can start with giving things for free to, uh, to other people as open course or open educational resources. Many people can use it and learn about what you can offer. Uh, you can put it in a book that people can pay for uh, a little amount to go themselves through it with a book or an ebook. But many people want support and they want uh, an official certificate. Then you can offer it as an online course. Still the same materials, but less people will do it. But these people will pay for those services. And in fact, you're not selling your course materials, but you sell uh, the products and services. The same materials you can use in face-to-face -face, uh, short courses, uh, recycle it again in tailor-made trainings, existing materials, and use it in your daily uh, master modules that you offer to your own students. So have a look at that other webinar, uh, the link I will show you where you can find that. So this is then an example how uh, you uh, can uh, offer that to, uh, to clients. So the different uh, modalities and then what they get for it. So all the course materials are for free. But then if you want added value, products and services, then uh, people start paying. And most flexibility you have in the tailor-made trainings. Now, open education, there is, of course, MOOCs, where you have a large group of people following your uh, free uh, materials. Uh, as I said, we did one for uh, Afri Alliance. That's a great way to showcase what you have and do things with partners together uh, in, in projects, for example. We really encourage that. You can have webinars. Uh, I had this very nice one with the Australian Water School where we had a thousand people spread over the globe uh, registered and we could showcase a lot of our work, including our paid uh, online courses. And then the open educational uh, resources and the open access. Just to go back to what open really means, that's not, um, not just putting something out there, but also allowing people, and especially us in our partnership with, with you, to use, reuse, and redistribute it. So in fact, what we make available can be non-commercially, in our case, be uh, reused by others for their own students or in their own network. And we hope you will do the same. Uh, we have our free uh, open courseware on our open courseware platform. I'm going to demonstrate that in a bit. Just want to point out that we have three new ones was presented in the last webinar that was uh, during the open education week. So we have one now on irrigation management and development, on delta planning and management, and one on experimental uh, methods. And um, I'll show you the open courseware website. Good browser. So it's here, ocw.un-ihe.org. And uh, there you see, you can find all these courses. I'm going to highlight one. So here's one on GIS. And uh, in Moodle, you can easily make this and we can assist you. Uh, I will show you also that later, how we assist you with that to, to develop these kind of uh, materials. And uh, you can embed uh, videos, playlists, uh, quizzes, everything, and uh, yeah, offer that to the rest of the world. Um, then we also have our closed eCampus where um, our own students follow classes. That is not open courseware, but that's what we offer to our students. And this is an example of how you can apply blended learning. So in blended learning, we have face-to-face um, -face mixed with online. So you have to give good instructions to the students. It's explained here how it, how it works. And we come with, we give a schedule so people see what they can do each day. They have to prepare a video before coming to class. And then in the class, we will do question and answer. And we do quizzes with Kahoot. They can win a prize. In this case, they can win a sticker. And that really motivates them to learn the stuff. And then they can work on, uh, on an exercise. So for each uh, day, we have a specific program. And we mix online with face-to-face. Um, -face, and they do then an assignment in the end. So that's another way of doing uh, online that's blended. Let me go back to the presentation. So 
So uh, our online courses, I want to uh, point out two. The first one is uh, this one. So online courses, they um, they need uh, detailed. Uh, sorry, uh, the, this course was uh, was implemented by uh, IG Delft with partners. In this case, uh, SciDev.net, the now based in capacity building network, Water Journalists Africa, and the University of Witwatersrand in Johannesburg in the DOPC2 project, uh, Open Water uh, Diplomacy. And uh, this is a nice example of how we develop an online course together with, uh, with you in partnership. And uh, yeah, we hope that we, we will have those uh, much more. Uh, another example is going to be presented now by uh, my colleague Carlos. I'm going to stop my presentation and give the word to, uh, to Carlos. <clears throat> Sorry, I'm Carlos Lopez. I am Associate Professor in Sanitary Engineering at IG Delft, and I have been in charge of one of the online courses uh, developed also with funds from the UPC that is called uh, Biological Waste Water Treatment Principles, Modeling and Design. This course was uh, one of the first courses developed by IG Delft. Actually, it was, one, it was the second online course launched in 2010, so it's a bit more than 10 years, and it was the first online course that got fully credited by IG Delft. Now, what was the purpose of this online course? Well, the main purpose was to fill a gap. Uh, for quite some time, there were uh, some developments main, mainly made by different leading research groups around the world, but they were not easily available for people from uh, the, the, the southern countries. So the main purpose was to gather all that knowledge and make it fully available for people that are very interested in these uh, latest developments, but they cannot have an easy access to this material. So the first idea, or the first purpose, was to prepare one book that could gather all this knowledge developed or, uh, or gotten in the last 20, 10, 15 years, back then in 20. Uh, in 2027, 2007. So this course covers in 18 chapters the latest developments related to wastewater treatment, advancing the knowledge on very basic concepts that can be now available for uh, different engineers and professionals on, for example, advanced techniques related to the removal of organic matter, nutrients, but also advanced processes related to disinfection, uh, toxicity, and uh, the latest techniques or technologies like moving bed bioreactors and membrane bioreactors, among others. This book was uh, launched in 2007, and uh, it was also very important, uh, or it's important to highlight that it was very well welcomed by the, uh, by the water sector. Uh, the first copy of this book, for example, was uh, given to uh, the king, back then the Prince of Orange, uh, William Alexander, and in the last 10 years it became, or it is, the most or the best-selling book of IWA, the International Water Association. Now, most of the success of this book is because of the content, because it uh, covers uh, these uh, leading-edge topics that were not included in any textbook back then. But the success of this online course comes from the fact that the main leading authors, in this case leading researchers, like for example Professor Mark van Loosrecht, who is, uh, uh, who is one of the awardees of the Stockholm Water Prize or the Singapore Water Prize, uh, was one of the leading editors and leading authors of the book chapters. Among many others, like for example Professor George Ekama, Moges Hense, uh, for example, so leading authors that were uh, in that time leading these uh, technologies. Now, all of them came to IEG uh, in around 2006, between 2006 2008, and they recorded different types of videos in our studio, and all this material presented by them was uh, the core or is the core of this online course. So this course, basically funded by the UPC, uh, gather all this information, but also uh, help us to uh, upgrade our uh, sanitary engineering specialization by incorporating all this new material into our own sanitary engineering master program, uh, who is presented as part of 
uh, a module taught at ISG Dell that is called conventional wastewater treatment. So in this way, we are also linking the online course with our regular MSc programs. It has around 40 hours of video materials that cover the 18 book chapters of the, of the book. And for the online course, and also thinking that uh, not always, uh, for example, it's easy to have a continuous access to, to the material, the textbook and in this case, the hard book of the text of the, of the of the textbook is sent to the participants who enroll in this course. And in addition, also the soft copy is available at ISG Delft eCampus. This course, because of all the material that it has, uh, can award up to six uh, European credit transfer or European credits that can be used as part of, uh, in this case, as part of the MSc program, but also if somebody enrolls in the online course, this person can also use it to pursue, for example, a graduate professional diploma program, or can also use it as a part of an MSc in other locations. Since then, this course has, have, uh, has had every year about 30 participants enrolled every year, and uh, nowadays we have around 300 participants uh, graduated uh, in this, uh, in this online course. Now, how do we uh, roll the, the course? Well, the, the course uh, rolls out uh, by posting the video lectures. Uh, we also have different types of assignments, and we uh, provide, as, tuto as tutors, we provide support to all the participants to uh, study, to follow up all the material, but also to solve different questions and different doubts that they may have. To track the progress, we have different weekly assignments that they have to deliver, one assignment per book chapter, and they have to submit it. In that way, we can uh, first help them to ensure that they have gotten the knowledge, but also we track the progress. Now, not everybody is interested in getting all the credits that this course can award. Some people are only interested in getting the knowledge, so uh, one person can uh, follow the course, and they, after they complete it, they can get a certificate of participation, and they already have the knowledge and experience of this online course. But if they are interested in getting the credits that this uh, online course can award, then in that way they should have a final oral exam. So if a person is interested in getting the ECTS, then the mark of this online course is composed of 40% of the average mark they get in the weekly assignments, and 60% is an oral exam that they have to have in the very end of the, of the course to uh, be able to get these credits. An important aspect to highlight is that we made an alliance with IWA, so partially because this, was of the, this, this is the best selling uh, book the bestseller book of IWA, we made an alliance with them to also promote this online course in the, uh, as a joint online course between IWA and uh, IAG Delft. And the success of this book uh, has been uh, such that this book is now also available in different languages. So we have one version in Korean, in Chinese, uh, Arabic, Spanish, Russian, and we have done this to also cover other uh, different sectors where, for example, the knowledge barrier, the language barriers do not allow this material to be widely distributed among different people. So this is uh, uh, just a small uh, snapshot of what has, had, uh, what has been the, this online course on biological wastewater treatment principles modeling and design. And, uh, and this is also one of the, 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 the outcomes of our, uh, in this case, of our IAG Delft Institute. One more, if I may have a bit of some time to, to promote it, and Hans has already mentioned it. Another one is the book Metodos Experimentales, para el tratamiento de residuales, of experimental methods for wastewater treatment, is another uh, online course that we have also launched, and is also present in the open courseware of IAG, or also in the link showed here on experimental methods. Thank you very much. Thank you, uh, Carlos. That's uh, an interesting uh, presentation of a real uh, online course that is, uh, has been very successful. Um, we'll continue with uh, the presentation. So, uh, of course, we would like to uh, have you as our partners also uh, being able to develop online courses. And therefore, we have, uh, for the second time, we will launch this course on the designing and planning of online courses. 
Uh, it is uh, uh, a six-week course. During this six-week course, uh, we will cover the first steps of an online course development process, the design and planning. Participants will design an online course and plan its development and implementation, interact with course participants by sharing ideas and providing feedback. And an important goal is that this course can lead to further institutional initiatives in online education to increase its impact with the support of uh, the DUCC2 program. I'm going to give you a bit more information about that uh, through something that I have for you, which is very nice. We have a sharing platform in Moodle. If you go to the OpenCourseWare uh, website, simply to ocw.un-ihc.org, then you can see here, if you go to the to the right, yeah. see this one, DPC2 e-learning knowledge platform for partners. If you go there, uh, we have here created this space on our open courseware, so it's open to everybody, but it's really for you, our partners, to share knowledge. So not only from us to you, but also vice versa. So we can learn about solutions and challenges and, and help each other uh, with this. And uh, there's uh, different tabs here. The first one is on distance communication, which, which is very important. How do we communicate in these times with each other? You might have many workshops for your DUPC2 projects and still want to be in touch uh, with each other. And uh, we also encourage you to go on with uh, the activities, but using then distance communication tools. There are free ones and uh, commercial ones mentioned here. Then there's a tab on uh, distance teaching where you can find a lot of information. I'll come back to that tab uh, later. And here's the webinars tab where we announce uh, webinars and collect the videos of past webinars. And if you have uh, questions and answers, you can uh, for now send it by email. We are, we are seeing how we can make it more interactively uh, that you can also do it in a, in a forum. But we really encourage you to share your experiences so we can learn from you and others can learn from you, but also your challenges where we can see how the DUPC2 uh, program can support the uh, online activities that, that you want. So I go back to this distance teaching and as uh, mentioned, uh, from now on you can register for this online training on online course development. Uh, there's a link here and on this page you can see uh, how to register. So we ask you to apply before the 3rd of April by sending an email to uh, uh, to this email address. And uh, there are some documents required. We need some uh, uh, motivation uh, letter. And uh, yeah, I hope uh, many of you will uh, use this very nice opportunity. And uh, let's all uh, create a lot of nice online uh, materials uh, to also be robust for the future when more of these corona crisis events, well, hopefully not, will happen, but also for the, the good reasons that were mentioned on the first uh, slide on why we do uh, online education, and therefore also the DUPC2 program wants to support that. Okay, I'm going back to the slides. This was almost the whole uh, presentation. So I'm opening the floor for uh, discussion now, and let's see if there are some uh, questions in the, in the chat. May I? Yes, go ahead, Carlos. Thanks, Hans. Uh, no, something I have, uh, or one of the experiences we have had, is that uh, to make, a, in this case, an alliance with IWA helped a lot in promoting the online course. So I, I, I'm thinking that uh, for every region, maybe it can also be strategically interesting to get in contact with the local uh, uh, practitioners, NGOs, associations, etc., uh, to know what they uh, what, what what they need, what they want, and also in this case the the, the associations of water professionals, and then prepare the material according to their needs. And by making the partnership, maybe the partnership can help in promoting the the, the online course or in this case the, the material targeting a specific need that they are facing. Yeah, I think that's an important one indeed, that the partnership can really extend uh, the, the target group and, and the access to, to the materials. And yeah. you can come up with all kinds of business models that that works, that you can share uh, then the, the benefits of that. Yeah, so yeah, it's not only to keep it at the level of the university, but yeah. to get as much as possible into the water sector. Yeah. 
Um, there is a question from uh, Nadine, which I would like to uh, use in the plenary. Is we would like to know from the uh, the participants their experience in e-learning and distance teaching. So maybe uh, you can comment on that. Um, looking at the uh, the attendees, maybe you can share if you're already doing that or what challenges do you foresee if you're not doing it yet. Um, maybe I can give the the word to Eric to to start with. Please share with with us uh, your experiences so far or your ideas on on e-learning. No, I I I do things uh, from a client perspective. I followed an uh, an edX uh, MOOC, and I found that the um, the the timing uh, was excellent, but the uh, it was very hard to uh, examine the, to do the examinations. Um, because you had some open questions, but they were automatically um, uh, checked. Um, so it, that, that was a really hard issue for, uh, um, for the course. So examination could be kind of a... a yes, uh, maybe uh, somebody from the Education Bureau can comment on that uh, examination issue, because we're also having that in, uh, at IHE, of course, at the moment. Can somebody share the experience on that? Hi, Hakel here. Can you hear me? Yep. Yes, good. Well, what I would like to mention is that so far for the open courses, for the MOOCs, and for the open courseware that we share, uh, we are not adopting examination as a more classical examination, let's say. Uh, but the way we, de we design the course together with partners or colleagues here at IEG, we design such a way that there will be steps of development. So, for, like, for example, if you have 10 topics, for each topic there is an activity that the participant has to complete so that he can go to the next activity and so on. And at the end he has a kind of portfolio and this portfolio will be uh, the object of examination. So that's uh, then we have an open access certificate at the end of the course. That's the way we are dealing now in what relates to open courses. Okay. Okay. Yeah, that sounds better than a question answer uh, situation. Yeah, great. I'm currently looking at what I normally do is that I do a lot of face-to-face -face trainings and I'm looking for a substitute for that. So the big blue button situation, it, it sounds, well, very nice, <laughs> as a matter of fact. So let's, let's um, uh, if, if you could elaborate a bit on how the uh, big blue uh, uh, stuff works for you, that would be great. Yeah, we are currently building a lot of experiences with uh, the lecturers with the big blue button, and so far it has been really uh, useful. Um, I don't know if Jipke is still in the, the meeting. I am. Yes, maybe, maybe <laughs> you can elaborate a bit on, on the big blue button and the experiences with that. Yeah, so uh, about two weeks ago, we really started using the big blue button in, uh, in, uh, in uh, regular teaching. And so far, the experience of the teachers are uh, overall pretty positive. They need some training, of course, in how to use it and what functionalities they, they have. But overall, when they, uh, when they had this, uh, this, this training, they, they use it quite extensively and they are very happy with it. And also from some students, I've heard that they, uh, that they, uh, they, uh, they really value it. Um, it, it yeah, it, it, let's be honest. It is hard to to listen to uh, to someone lecturing for two hours, uh, especially behind the screen. But uh, to add some interaction and also to have chats and to have polls is uh, is a very much added value that we uh, that we use um, in using the big blue button meeting. Yeah, I, I like the the option. Um, I, I just looked at it just in the presentation. Mm -hmm. uh, and I, I, I really like the option for uh, breakout rooms as well. Um, yeah. yeah, that's very nice. Okay. We are also planning to have the next webinar from uh, using Big Blue Button because this Skype for Business is uh, very hard to, to manage in webinars. 
and uh, we feel that the big blue button is more uh, suitable for that. And so then you, if you join the next webinar, you can even experience uh, it as a use. The next one will be on the 2nd of April, time to be announced. Uh, but uh, yeah, I'll in invite you in so you can see that. I see it in the chat as well now. Yeah. <laughs> so that will be a good opportunity to explore the functionalities for you. Uh, the subject was uh, distance uh, communication. I would just also like to use this opportunity to mention that we would love to hear from partners what is their interest and where they see a place for us to contribute to or to cover anything, questions. Um, yeah. yeah, I think uh, we can't emphasize that enough. Yeah, exactly. That's the main uh, purpose of, uh, of this webinar. We hope that uh, the people who watch this video uh, yeah, think about how uh, we can exchange our knowledge, but also that if you have challenges that uh, you can uh, discuss with us how we can uh, help you to, to solve those challenges. Yeah, and maybe also if people feel that distance teaching is not something that they can work in with within their institution, mm -hmm. that's also interesting to to know and why is that and what kind of other ways are, are they exploring then? Yeah. Because every condition is probably uh, different huh? here in, in, in Europe and the way we do it is probably very different than in other locations. And uh, we don't have much uh, clue about uh, how that goes. And we're curious yeah. to know those solutions and those challenges. Yeah, exactly. That was it from my side. Thanks. Thank you. Anybody else? Some final uh, remarks? Vim maybe or Raquel? Well, I can always say something. <laughs> I uh, just would like to invite the partners, the ones that are present in this meeting, the ones that will uh, watch this video afterwards, uh, to join this online course in designing planning, online courses, because we really go through the steps and also the, the, the didactics and the educational approach behind to design your course. So it's a very interesting course and I really hope you subscribe. I'm sure you will receive more information um, in the you can maybe you can put again the slides uh, Hans so that they know where to find the information and I will try to add something to the chat. So I really hope you subscribe and to see you online together with Hans. Okay there are several slides uh, I, will, I will show again how to find it. Uh, Hans? Yes, go ahead. Yeah. No, I, I, I don't have any. Um, I, I think I I, um, I would like to thank you and also the team. I think it, it, it worked very well. And uh, because I think, you know, at least for me, this is also quite new. And um, it, um, it works. And I hope it also works for our partners, also our partners in, um, in, in Africa, in the Middle East, and in Latin America. So I hope that next time, the next webinar, we will have more participants and more interaction. But, but what I see is that, uh, you know, it works. And, and, and it's a quite pleasant way of, uh, of getting information and, and, and interacting with each other. So that's a bit my observation of this webinar. So I think we should do it much so just to, to repeat how to, to find the stuff, uh, go to my browser. So the first thing, you you can go for all the information to ocw.un-ihe.org. When you scroll down, maybe uh, the Education Bureau can put the title uh, first, or that it's at least on the first page. But here you can find it. You click on this DUPC2 e-learning knowledge platform for partners. And um, under the tab Distance Teaching, but maybe we can get announcements uh, here first. Huh? Uh, we, we will still work on that. This is very new. Just in the last few days, we have been developing this for you. But uh, here you find under Distance Teaching now the online training. And if you then click here, you come on this website where you find all the information on how to register. And uh, yeah, please do that before the 3rd of April, and then you can get started as soon as possible. Okay, I think that's it for, for now. So I wish you all good luck with uh, developing e-learning stuff. I uh, hope this was useful for you. And uh, yeah, let's uh, keep on exchanging knowledge on this. And 
see you hopefully in the next webinar. Bye bye. And thank you to the whole team. Yes, you did a lot of work. Great.